Good uh, morning uh, to Chris, uh, but as well, good morning to anyone who is joining us in the recordings afterwards. Welcome to our workshop on getting started with digital chat comms with uh, Mike Lowe, who is the BU communications lead, and myself, Hannah. I am a digital missioner working with Baptist Union associations across the country and churches. Um, yeah, all around on getting started with digital. Um, so today we're going to go through various kind of different things from why communications are important to actually starting to build a strategy and how to make best use of each of the different platforms. Uh, we will be taking a few breaks. Um, so if it gets cut, that's just where we have uh, stopped recording for the breaks. Um, and we also will be sharing various links. So if we talk about things that are in the chat, the chat will be made available alongside the uh, video and any links as well will be added also. Um, so yes, welcome. And um, we hope that this session is useful and helpful. Mike, do you wanna start? Um, I can do, I can do. Um, <laughs> I can do. <laughs> so um, I didn't know actually though, Hannah, whether or not you wanted to start on the theological reflection side, just have a look at your notes or whether or yeah, not you wanted to yeah, do no, that's yeah, fine. Uh, <laughs> uh, the, can you all see that? Is that all okay? That's all good. Supers. Um, so what do you want to know? Um, so Chris, we've uh, had a little chat beforehand anyway. So um, just sort of for those who um, are watching and if we're going to make like a reference to it a bit later on. So you want to think about how to better use digital for your um, community where it is maybe a bit slightly older um, congregation who maybe aren't um, most digitally native. So if we make examples of that, uh, that's just sort of uh, to help put that in context for you. So theological reflection, why is digital and communications important? Do you, want, do you want me to go through that, Mike? Yeah, go on, Hannah. Oh, go on. I'll All right. I'm just trying to it. make Mike do some work. I'll do some work in a minute. But, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, um, personally, I find that a lot of people do say, well, digital's sort of, you know, irrelevant or, or it's, it's irrelevant to the church. We need to be um, doing things how it was in biblical times or you know it needs to always be sort of in the building and things but actually I do really believe that there are a lot of examples in the bible of where um culture and society if it was done in today's day that we would be pe people from the bible would be using digital so there's so many different examples of things that we can learn from the bible I mean, the first of thinking about Jesus, so he went to the places where people were. He didn't preach from the synagogue on a Sunday. He went to the beaches. He went to the crowds. He went to the houses and he went to where the people were, where the people, you know, were broken and sick and suffering. And he went to those places and gave them comfort there. And sort of, yeah, if we think that kind of contextually to today, we need to be going where the people are. And yes, for a lot of people that is still gathering on site at a place. So, you know, meeting in the buildings, but equally it doesn't have to be in a church building. It could be a cafe or a workplace. And especially for sort of the younger generations, a place where we gather is online. And that is where sort of we spend a lot of our kind of, um, mental and social time is is through social media platforms as we get more into it kind of like vr and ar and um, things like that but jesus went to those places so we should be going to those places as well obviously paul did go to a lot of the places he worked with um and, and the communities that he helped sort of uh, that he knew and but he then when he wasn't there he wrote letters to them and that's what the bible is made up of like you know his books are made up from the letters and um, so he clearly wasn't with them at the time yet equally what he the teachings and um, advice and the, the things that he said to them were are just as valuable to um, us today reading them as it is was for those who read them at the time and so equally, you don't have to be directly sort of in touching distance with someone to be able to give them spiritual nourishment or education. Um, 
So again, I think Paul, I do believe that if Paul was alive today, he would be a prolific tweeter and would just be always um, putting something out. So again, that's sort of like that, that distance is still present in, in those who, who wrote the Bible. Mm -hmm. And um, for a lot of them, the Old Testament, and yes, they took the kind of um, the tent version of the temple. Sorry, I should have <laughs> checked the word for that. Um, they did take the kind of like their, their movable temple with them, um, sort of up until the actual temples were sort of structures were built. But the nomadic lifestyle of much of the Old Testament equally is an example of how one doesn't need to be in a specific physical location and that God moved around with people he, you know his spirit was with people and it didn't matter whether they were in you know you know Egypt or Bethlehem or somewhere else God was there with them and their experience of that and their relationship with God and their relationship with the communities that they were in were no less because of that so again though even though the nomadic lifestyle is more of a um it is a physical embodiment of it. I think actually it's sort of transientness, that's probably not a word, um, is it can, can equally be used um, for, for digital and online. And a couple verses that I've really taken comfort over, particularly during the pandemic, um, but in sort of my work uh, through digital <clears throat> is um, the first Esther 414 for such a time as this could you imagine if the pandemic have ha would have happened 10 years ago even five years ago you know we we wouldn't have had the technology that we have had now I mean even over the pandemic it's advanced significantly you know actually the fact that digital is here is such a gift and we really should take advantage of that and then in Mark new wine needs new wine skins and I'm going to say probably something quite controversial here um but as a young person I you know I use digital and I think that the church or how church is done needs to adapt to that and that a new structure of church needs to be done that's not saying I don't think that it all needs to be done online but I think there needs to be adaptions made um to to create a new wine skin of the church because actually we've it's sort of time to, to to have new wine skins um and then in ephesians um so christ gave himself to the apostles the prophets the evangelists the pastors and the teachers to equip his people for works of service so that the body of christ may be built up now obviously in a um on-site church you've got people with various different roles and responsibilities and giftings yet what about the people who are gifted in photography or video creation video editing who are really able to create stories and connect with people online why are we not giving these people a chance to uh serve their church in their ways and their giftings and so i think that digital is just another part of the body and we should be using it um and then in matthew um where two or three are gathered um and people, again, often, you know, we always use that for sort of small groups and things like that. But equally, I think if we are gathered online, so there's three of us here today, I think there's, you know, that I, God is here with us and he can, you know, if we were having a prayer group or something, I think that we could have um, something that would be powerful, even if we are not sort of able to physically um, touch and hug each other. I think it's still online can be so powerful and you know we shouldn't be limiting God to to not being able to move online um I think they're really good points there I mean one of the things I just add on the um the theological reflection side and, it, and again if you want to go away and uh, have, have a look at these stories and reflect on them is um <clears throat> well sticking with Paul actual fact if you end up going and and reading the account, which is Acts um, 17, verses 16 onwards, when he visits um, Athens, I think that's just a really good example of Paul contextualising the gospel and communicating it in the right way. We'll go on in, in the minutes to um, sort of vision and listening and the points, but he actually goes to Athens. He understands whether he listens and watches, um, and then he works out where are the places in which where he can be heard, 
and then he goes out to the marketplace. It works out that clearly the speakers go out and, and talk in the marketplace and he goes and has some banter with them and, and they, they challenge him and that sort of thing. But nevertheless, he gets to the point where he's talking in front of the Areopagus, the, the top level of, of Greco um, times of talking and exchange of ideas. And so it's really interesting um, if, you, if you go through from um, when Paul arrives in Athens and his process to get in front of talking in front of the Areopagus. And as I said, it's one of the, I think it's a really good, honest account. There's no sense of, there's no great revival there in Athens. You know, a few people get convinced, but it's the fact that Paul goes through a process, gets to the right places and people are listening and something is there to carry on afterwards. And then from, um, some, from a Matthew 5 point of view, I, I just find it really interesting, again, looking at the, the communication journey that Lee, Jesus went on when he comes out um, from the desert and he withdraws to Galilee and he's on his own. This is at the start of officially the start of Jesus' ministry and he is one person. And within a very short period of time, he knows that part of his calling is to tell people about the truth about himself and God um, and to reveal something. But he can't just do that with a couple of people. This is he has an aim of which the Sermon on the Mount a crowd of thousands. He goes from one person to a crowd of thousands in a, in a short period of time. But you see his approach to communication in terms of getting people on board, a team, giving them things to do, and then that journey towards the fact mm. that the Sermon on the Mount needed to be in front of a, of a huge crowd. And, and I find that quite helpful in, um, yeah, in overall communications and certainly reflecting on, yeah, it theologically. Yeah. No, I hadn't um, thought about those points, actually. So I will add them to my list. <laughs> yeah. Well, I'm starting from, I think, in my bit, it is, I suppose, some underlying foundations to communication, which a lot of the things that we obviously that we can use today and we can look at going forward, a lot of those are, I have an art background and people can, and, and the thing that you get taught very early on is that anything that you use within art is a tool. And it's the same with communications. It, it's like a toolbox of, of different things. And I think what you can get lost in is the sort of perhaps the, the gloss and sheen that a certain thing can do or what a, what a new bit of tech can do. Mm -hmm. um, and you can sort of get lost in the, uh, in the gadgetry of it all, or in perhaps sometimes the romance and, and how people use a, a certain thing. Whereas they are tools, but you've got to use them appropriately. And, yeah, you know, there's lots of different analogies you can use, but I think I think yes. Imagine yourself. You've got a communication toolbox. Those are helpful, but in fact, what are you working with to begin with? One of the things that I would um, sort of suggest um, for people before you even start this sort of journey of which tools you're going to do is what are the processes in which yeah you've got your church vision and purpose as, as it says at the top there. But to have a church vision and purpose, you've actually got to understand your community because there's that whole sense of God calling us. He's got a plan and purpose for each of us and also a plan and purpose for uh, a community uh, as well. Um, so one of the things I, I sort of really encourage churches to do is firstly actually have a listening team. Um, and, and what's great about a listening team is that this is this this is age and ability and dependence. It's wherever certain people are in the community. It could be within a care home. It could be the person that works at the checkout. It could be the person, the mum on the playground. It could be the person that works as a cashier. It could be somebody that volunteers in a charity shop. A whole group of different people for which they're actually quite observant and, and they can just sort of sense what and they can see what's happening in your community to be able to listen to your community um, and see what's going on can help drive your purpose and vision and if you don't have that purpose and vision right then it doesn't matter how great your live streams are what tech you've got and how skilled those people are if it's not hitting why you're there then yeah you will have you will have trouble and uh, you, you won't have that you won't be following god's plan um, in that way um, and I think if you've got a listening team, which then feeds into the leadership in the church, I think that's really helpful. And always have that listening team feeding in. 
and some of those people could also be part of a communications team and these are and I come from a small church context so I know whenever I say the word team this can be the same people that are doing quite lots of different things but certain people that are energized um, by listening to the community and how we might communicate back to them um, and I think it's really helpful if you are explicit uh, and planning how you're thinking about communications. So I want to come at this from a couple of different angles. There's, there's that listening team, communicating team, um, maybe a different way that I, I can sort of present this and I'm hoping just one of those will um, stick with you as an idea. Um, think of this quite holistically, um, really. How you communicate isn't just about what tech you're using and whether or not you're on social media. This is about thinking about you would like to share the gospel with people. Um, and in which case, we know we live in a very secular society now. So a lot of the ideas, a bit like if you read the, um, the Paul in Athens piece, people will go, resurrection? Not, not quite buying that one. And they will challenge it and they think, well, I'm not really interested in this at all. I, I think, as they said to Paul, what's this babbler talking about? So in which case, what is the, what, what is the overall communication approach uh, that we need to do and I think thinking of it quite holistically is helpful and a couple of the uh, a couple an example I've used in the past is actually thinking about if somebody suddenly feels that they've got some sort of spiritual yearning that for whatever reason they think we, we need to sort of explore faith and and this may be uh, yeah a, a, a young woman with a, a maybe a young single woman with a daughter and they don't know they've got no idea no idea what to do what would they do um, in that process and this is where you start to think where are the places in our community uh, which we could actually be present when someone's making these early these early explorations we know a lot of young people well let's start with young people but they, they will go to their phones and they will have a look they might go well okay then i i, I know about churches if somebody goes onto Google Maps, will they find your church or your community? Will it be on there? Um, they may well have a look at a website. People like to sort of definitely see what's going on and will explore social media. What, what's actually happening? They might not go into any great depth, but they'll actually see whether or not that content is up to date. Um, Hannah may touch on this later, but one of the big, big problems that I've, I have always had with church comms is that somebody may have spent some, a great deal of time getting a tool work, working well, like a website, but they never update it. And there's nothing worse than going, going to a church website in June and, and the and details of the Christmas service from last year are still on there. Um, so you have to think, we'll go on to that in a minute, as to, as to perhaps why... Um, comms just sort of slips down people's priority list but we'll come to that but again you can imagine this person going and looking um looking at all these various online things and then there's yeah yeah will they find you if in fact will you be in mentioned in, in the sort of the local community when i was in local ministry i've had a good relationship i was in derby so that the main derby telegraph i always got had a good relationship with the human resources the human interest story journalist Whenever we were doing something interesting, like setting up a job club uh, or doing stuff with our food bank, which spoke into issues at the time. You know, I look at these and these are what, 2015. These things don't change, do they? Look, we're, we're, I won't get political, but there we go. It was at the time a young family who had cancer, was working full time, but still needed the food bank. And it was how we spoke into that. And of course, this went into print and also was online as well. Things like newsletters, one of the things that worked well for me in the community was church newsletters. I often find are only really for the converted, they're, they're in, and it, a very much an internal glorified notice sheet, which can spend, you know, people spend a lot of time working on. But I said, no, if we're going to do a newsletter, it's for the community. We want to share things with the community, in which case it was a, a seasonal newsletter two sides, professionally printed and designed, which told people about what we'd been up to that was relevant to them. Again, listen to the community, what's relevant to them, what we're doing about that. And this is what was given out. I, again, I was in a small church context, but you know, so, so we had about 20, 25 members, but plus people that supported the community, I used to just give sort of 
10, 20 of these to everybody and say, you go and hand one of these out to your friends, to your neighbors and, uh, and take it from there rather than doing it over, uh, just doing a mail drop. Again, thinking holistically, what's outside the church? If that person, if this young person say, comes to your church, what, what's that impression? What is your building? If you've got one, communicating when you get there. Um, there's absolutely nothing wrong with quoting scripture, but will it connect with somebody who doesn't know anything about the Bible? Will that mean anything to them at that point? So again, this is about listening to the community. And what's the state of the building? What does the garden look like? What's the pointing and the brickwork like? All of these sorts of things communicate to people. Um, and, and we know people judge a book by its cover. And often you will go past churches with a tired notice board and the building looks, you know, it looks a bit shabby. No one's, no, no one's been tending the garden and people will get put off by that, sadly. So again, this is more than just digital communication, but I hope you can see that they're all interlinked because if you don't think about them as a whole, you will fall, you, you will fail at, at any given point. Um, I, I, I changed our, uh, again, this is sort of just contextual at the time. I used to do it, I used to create, this is a, a sort of a graphic from a big banner I used to I used to rotate about sort of every six months to a year at our church so this was a big banner about 10-15 feet across and I'd update it so one of our strap lines was blessings from everybody saying the things that we did contact all the different ways you can contact us or me and get in touch that was the, that was our notice board wouldn't be the one that you would use but it was about trying to be contextual to something that worked with that. And again, continuing that communications journey. If someone's managed to connect, used, found you, looked from the outside, thought that was good. What does the inside look like when you get there? What sort of welcome? What sort of thing? What's the smell like? Um, all those sorts of things. You know, there's certain there's certain ways you go into a church, and yeah, you know, for me, it's quite nostalgic. Something that smells sort of quite musty, and something from the 1970s. Yeah, it reminds me of my childhood. But I don't know if you're in your early 20s, whether that's the sort of thing you want. Um, often within our Baptist churches, part of my um, background in art is you go into most Baptist churches and there's nothing on the walls. Or you might get somebody who's done a little banner. Again, what, what could you put on? What I used to do, because they were sort of quite, and they're still quite cheap to do, is that, yeah, certainly if you've got a little budding photographer in your church um, who takes pictures, um, and obviously, if you've got permission to use them, print them out, put them in, put them on canvases. That's what I used to do. So our church was filled of good stuff that we did as a community. You came in and I had about 15 odd canvases on the wall that I used to rotate once a month so they didn't gather dust and just become wallpaper. And that means people came in and think, oh, wow, OK, then this is the community. Um, but it is, again, a, a facet of most Baptist churches that they, they, they tend to be really bland when you go inside. You don't need lots of money. You don't need to have a million pound rebuild and have a super grand design, something that Kevin McLeod would come and visit. You know, just use cheap tools to, to convey the community, uh, a happy community. Um, and these, these are some classics that I've always heard from people. The welcome when you come in, what's the coffee like? What are your toilets like? Um, what, what sort of language is being used? what's the provision for special needs is it about whole life discipleship and I know I'm sort of you may feel like if you're watching this now and Chris Graham you may feel I'm slightly off piste here but it, it all counts as that community that holistic communication that yeah you may want you may come here going well I'm just sitting here waiting for the bit about social media the bit of social media is completely irrelevant if the rest of it's not working and, and that, that's what's really important um, and of course, you, you can carry on. And once you get in there and you get to know people, what are the ways you, you maintain relationships? Is it going to be through uh, an email? And of course, there's loads of church content management tools that we could look at. Uh, would you have WhatsApp groups? Do you use Messenger? That sort of thing. How is God communicating with us? 
Um, and I will sort of just end this little bit with, again, just sort of different ways into trying to understand the, the, where we've been going to here. Um, so this is sort of known as the sort of the golden cycle. Um, and you can have a look, Simon Sinek is somebody you can, who sort of talks about this a lot. You can go onto YouTube and listen to many talks that he does. Fundamentally, um, a lot of people, organizations, churches, tend to come at what you're seeing on the screen with always the, what shall we do? You know, what shall we be using? What should we be using? Um, what sort of social media should we be on? Um, what sort of kit should we be using for the live stream? But in fact, the question you should always be, uh, you should always start with is why? Why are you doing anything? And that is a far more fundamental and strategic question of why you are doing things. And I'm hoping you can then think it links back to what I was saying a few minutes ago, is that if you have listened to your community, you've got a listening team, you know some of the whys in your context. Why do you need to do anything? It's because you've already listened to your community and you're trying to work out the best way to communicate that uh, as a whole. Um, so always steer clear of the what, start with the why, and work out what you need to do to know the, the answer to the why, actually. You may start then and go, I don't know the answer, actually. In which case, what do you need to do to do that? Do you need to go out to the community um, and, and listen more? Um, but yeah, I don't know whether or not, um, sort of Chris Graham, whether or not you've got sort of any questions about that, because it's one of those things which I think about a lot. But for some people, you go, OK, I don't quite get that, or I'd like to sort of explore that some more. But I don't know whether... Anybody's got any initial thoughts on that? Uh, I mean, I know from my own point of view is um, you, we've got to remain relevant. And um, that's why I, I'm, I'm attending today and uh, trying to get to get more information. What uh, I think, find quite frustrating is though, um, I know Hannah mentioned this about people who perhaps have those skills of video and uh, photography, as you mentioned. Uh, if I put any media app in a service, I tend to go to America, the skip guys, I don't know if you know them, uh, but there's nothing in the UK for that sort of thing. So there's nothing that's applicable. Well, I mean, it's all American based, um, which I find very frustrating. And I also find it quite frustrating as well in churches about getting people to change their attitudes to video and audio. They're very negative, and especially when things go wrong. And I feel so far, sorry for the guys and gals who actually are there. I mean, I know from my own point of view, the same regard as trying to get media, I'm spending over £300 a year myself when I go to do um, ministry uh, to provide that sort of for folk. And it doesn't seem to be like a, a central repository in the UK, um, how to better communicate the gospel, really, and people to, to look at it and say, yeah, that makes sense, that doesn't. Uh, but and, and, again, and again, I agree with you about uh, spe especially special needs. One of the things I'm very sensitive of, because I've got a guy, a friend who's uh, blind, is that very rarely in church services, um, when something visual comes up for the, for the congregation, and if there's words of the Bible or there's um, uh, words regarding the particular subject, there's nobody actually reading out those words. So the poor people who are blind are completely cut off for it. And it, um, and we don't we you know how do you get that sort of um, mindset in folk in in the church to say ah, I must think about that uh, I must so when we see those sort of things then therefore we include them and then what I find is especially a friend of mine he feels more and more isolated uh, and then of course they feel less likely to come because they are always outside of what's taking place. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, I hope you won't mind me saying, Glenn, I've just seen that you've unmuted, but Glenn is actually... Straight away at the gate. <laughs> yeah, Glenn is actually blind. Um, so, yeah, actually, what you just said, Chris, I'm, I'm sure... Um, yeah, sorry, Glenn, you, you, you unmuted. You were going to say something. I was about to say that you actually have in the southwest somebody who is... Uh, equipped to visit churches about uh, these sort of matters, who has uh, contributed a great deal of train training over the years in these sort of matters, quite prepared to go to churches to uh, to talk these things through. 
uh, it, it's me basically and I'm, I'm just selling myself quite frankly <laughs> <laughs> and i'm quite happy to do that sort of thing freelance uh, other than expenses free to churches to you know, consultancy sort of fashion to uh, to go through what, why this is important it, again mike is right because you know when you're looking at special needs things or whatever however you want to frame that the mistake is definitely the what first. That's where the whole thing in you know, attitudes and everything stumbles. I'm going to remember that actually, uh, Mike. Something very succinct to begin with. The why is a much more important. Why are you including? Uh, I don't mean to pull you up. Quote to these poor people. You know why? Are you, why are you including that? Why is it important to you? Is it you know? It, it, and that, that's uh, I, I'm just grateful for the whole thing, Mike, to have this whole thing, these whole things laid out before you, and realizing where my church stands, where other churches stand in this. Uh, because if you're if you're handling the whole lot as as I'm doing at the moment. It is a long way down the list. And just to actually see all this laid out, what the consequences of not having it higher are, the listening team thing is fabulous. I'm just so grateful for the way in which you've you've started this process for us. Because you just you you know it, but because there's so many things you're juggling with, never apologize for repeating yourself. Because uh, is, it, is it repetition is the best form of learning and all that kind of thing. So thanks, Mike, just for where you've been and to Chris, I'm in the handbook. Um, and I suppose um, it's, it's tricky for churches, you know, if, if you don't have, if everyone's the same for what, in whatever way, that actually then when you have someone different and whether that's from abilities or just sort of, um, you know, uh, different interests and stuff like that, you know, if you're not facilitated to have kids and then suddenly a family turns up, it's not that it's your fault that you don't have anything for kids. You just aren't prepared for it. But equally, if we're wanting to welcome people in the building, if if your toilets are only upstairs because everyone's fine to, to run up the stairs to go to the loo, actually, are you thinking about, well, how would someone who is not us feel coming, you know, like, and it's, yeah, I don't, it's not just for sort of disabilities or things, but but you know, again, if someone's like, well, actually, what if they work on a Sunday? Do you record your Sunday service so make it that they can listen to it in whatever form? Um, so yeah, so it's I think it is really important to kind of just think about yeah, um, looking outwards, sort of, or, or looking in from the outwards, or just trying to see it from a different perspective. Well, that's it. The gospel is inclusive, isn't it? At the end of the day. <laughs> God, God's very clear that the gospel is for everybody and if we are there as his hands and feet in the world and we are charged under Matthew 25 to go out and make disciples to tell people about Jesus and that's it we are charged to being inclusive and so I think you, you, you've highlighted so well we've already highlighted some really interesting ones there you've mentioned young people their children young people you've got to be you, yeah the whole the whole argument of well we don't have any young people that doesn't mean that you're not prepared for them um, you have to be prepared. And if that's it, you go, oh, well, we don't have any people in wheelchairs or any blind people. Oh, well, we don't need to. So, of course you do. You need to be prepared before. You need to be able to show that you're inclusive. Again, back to yeah, simple things like, oh, we don't have any black or brown people in our area or white people in our area. Um, or we don't have any, uh, any, anybody else from another country in our area or in our church. Well, you go, well, no, because the whole idea is that your church looks attractive to all people and, and all nations. And this is this whole holistic communication uh, uh, approach. And yeah, yeah, you, th th just because you haven't got any is probably a bad sign um, of these yeah. things. <laughs> how, how have you, how are you communicating? Back to what I said, that whole communication journey. The reason that people, ha you haven't, is that because people have not been attracted to yeah. this. And people were attracted to Jesus because of his inclusivity. So, yeah. Yeah. it's not hard just you, you've just the, the concepts aren't hard but you've got to work hard to, to make it happen yeah. yeah and one of the cheapest things we can work on and mike brought it out but i really want to bring it out a bit more for the recording mm. 
uh, is the thing of language, how mm. important the, the way we communicate, the words we choose, you know, really being thoughtful about the words we choose, what, what's associated, not just whether they can be understood, whether they're the sort of English people are using nowadays, which is, which is of course, hugely important. You don't, you don't use the sort of like 18th century language <laughs> in, in communications, but, you know, what are, the, what are the images I'm using? What are the sort of words I'm using? Are, how would they come over to all people in my community? Exactly. Yeah, yeah, that's good. Not under, just understood, but felt within the heart of a person. Mm, mm. Cool. Um, sh should we should we continue, Mike? Did you want to share anything else? Uh, no, I think I think that that's okay for now. I think I think that's it. By the looks of it, so Chris and Glenn have, have sort of understood those, those those fundamentals. And again, just for that that recording, um, it, it is those fundamentals of holistic communication. Uh, it is, I would just really, really advise you, yeah, yeah, get a listening team, be listening to your community all of the time. And what I like about that in particular is that you often get certainly some older members of the congregation, and I know I've had this, going, oh, Mike, I, I wish I could do more in church, or I, I wish, you know, the, the very much the sort of the, the Marthas of the church who, who would really be always looking to be doing, always be in the kitchen, and then all of a sudden they can't, and, and perhaps they have gone into a nursing home or they aren't but they're still, they're still part of different communities and they can feed in what they're listening and seeing and being part of. And so again, it's brilliantly inclusive. And yeah, you're gonna hear from different parts of the community, which will inform the why you are doing anything and will help you understand how holistic your communication is doing. So I know I've gone again, but as Glenn has said, repetition is the best form of learning these things. <laughs> I will shut up now and pass to you, honey. <laughs> no, that's, no, that's good. Um, all good stuff. Um, can you all see the slides? Mm -hmm. Is that all up? Um, so yeah, I'll um, I'm not going to repeat all of the things that are on this, but if it's yeah, just sort of have a listening team, have a comms team, um, and thinking like why it's important. Um, from us like so to so think sort of actually about strategy well actually if you've got a strategy you know how to structure the things that you want to say and you know then how what's the sort of things you need to be finding to create content um and it does help them with planning in other departments and other groups of actually if you know what you say and how you say it you you as again like holistically you are a stronger voice because actually you've got a sort of more unified voice the, rather than well the Sunday service says this thing and then the, the kids groups during the week say this and then the midweek of sort of group says this thing and actually if you've got kind of one um cohesive strategy actually it really helps to sort of um create something that's that's clearer um everywhere else um but also if, like thinking like, are you going in the right direction? So if we think, you know, if you're in a very um, rural area, you don't really want to be thinking too much about necessarily targeting students or things like that, because you're in a, um, you know, you probably don't have that demographic around you, but say then a new housing estate gets built um, sort of close by, actually you could suddenly be thinking about, well, what are the, who are the sort of people that are moving into those houses is that young families is that sort of you know young professionals actually let's review it and we can pivot our message slightly because suddenly now we've got you know we have something that we know how to hold and how to move it um and then also if thinking about how you try new platforms so if you're in a very urban area then and actually you do have a likelihood of young families or young adults well actually yeah TikTok seems to be going the way let's try this and actually we know how we're going to how we're going to create content on it because we know how we use our voice um so yeah like it it is really important and it's not to say though you have to have something that's like 50 pages you know the big sort of folder but just having things that you're able to work through and work on uh really sort of help you in the long run so let's build a strategy um, so the first thing to think about um are the sort of the 
house because I don't actually know if that's the right word um but there's sort of like actually what are the the first steps that you need to be taking so what are your goals what are the things that you actually want to be doing so is it about building community but actually you just want to create something whether that's online or on site but you want to just build people who know and love each other know and love God and you know are, are there for each other and actually the, the, there is this sort of sense of um neighborly love whether that is like a building neighbor or or just sort of people that are in a, in a similar area you know is it about building community is it about actually facilitating small groups so that people are really um you know living life together and that they are in contact with each other and so that when the church gathers on a sunday that actually there is sort of a a strengthened um sense of uh friendship and family and fellowship is it about fundraising so you've got a building project and actually you just really want to be reaching out to people and you know the church has a bit of a reputation for trying to fund for the for the church roof so actually um you know how can you do it in a sort of uh in a less annoying way you know actually but that is actually a big thing because you want to create a community space where everyone can can make you know use it are you just wanting to increase reach so you just want to get the gospel out there are you wanting to uh work on discipleship and so that actually the the, the people that you're connecting with really are deep and strong disciples and that there isn't this sort of like wishy-washiness about your church but actually they are really solid disciples you know what are you going to be doing about that so it could be more on teaching and um study and things like that or do you want to teach throughout the week so I mean those are just examples but you can you, you know what actually do you want to be doing what are your wins so when something happens so actually if it's about um building community you know what are your wins well actually we just want to see people messaging say you know for online we just want to be messaging in the church family group or the whatsapp group we want people to be sharing their prayer requests we want people to be sharing their prayers being answered they're just going actually do you know what i've cooked too much for dinner anyone want to come over and share this meal with us or you know what are the things that you see as being wins and it's such an easy thing to do on social media is to just look at the numbers and just say oh well this this had loads of likes but these next few posts didn't really do very well and then get really demoralized on that and so it's you kind of need to like not think about that and and have the blinkers on actually what is it really that you want to be doing and that's then when you sort of when something happens that you see these um you know whatever your wins are when you see them that you actually go yay that's a really exciting thing because that is what we wanted to see and that's what what what's going to motivate us in moving uh then thinking kind of about your branding so this might be something that your church already has in place or not and that's sort of something that you additionally need to think about um but who are you that should say as a church family <laughs> um who are you as a church family so uh, as Mike said already of like you know what are your demographics actually are you a very kind of like white community or are you a very diverse community do you have a lot of international people that actually sort of really creates this rich diverse um church family or are you more um older generations or younger generations a lot of students a lot of families you know, who are you what are the messages that you sort of typically um focus on so is it a lot about uh say discipleship or social justice and um you know environment or you know what are the things that your church is really passionate about what are the missions that you work with so again if it's social justice or environment or are there particular partners that you work with um so uh bms or ma math yeah, mission aviation fund. You know, are there sort of different mission groups that you work with? Is it local? Is it international? How do you connect with them? And keywords. So again, if you actually your church has a real focus on um, inclusivity for again, like different abilities or or for children, actually, do you have what are the keywords that are used and used well? And you know, is the I don't want to say it's the worst thing. It's not the worst thing, but it's a really frustrating thing from a comms perspective. You see a church that says like, oh, we're a, a 
diverse all-inclusive church or something and then you turn up and it's sort of um people that kind of all look the same and actually there isn't a lot of diversity in it and you sort of think mm, kind of feel like slightly this was a you know when they probably didn't mean it and they they are very welcoming if someone different comes in but actually is that really um you know are you accurately representing yourselves um and it's not that this all needs to be public or sort of anywhere specific um, for everyone to find, but it's really good to have this kind of within key leadership teams and comms teams of just getting, knowing actually what other things that we, um, you know, particularly want to focus on and particularly highlight. And then um, okay, it sounds very like wishy-washy, oh, it's the branding of like the colours and the images and stuff, but actually it's really important of creating this kind of um, unified look of your church so think about actually what are key colors that you want to use so I really like that outside banner um that you put up Mike of the blue one with the yellow writing because that's very distinctive and I you know maybe I can't remember exactly what it says but I know those colors so if I'm walking past that banner you know on my way to work every day and then I see something online that's in that same blue and yellow oh well that actually that I've, I've seen something like that and it's sort of again it's that repetition of those things that particularly kind of highlight uh that, that echo and and sort of then I might be more inclined to look at it and again images I mean it's tricky and it's not that you want to repeat the same images over and over again but if you're in a particular area so whether you're by um by the seaside so I used to live in Plymouth and so we did use a lot of kind of um maybe not explicitly water related things but I used a sort of like a, a lot of water backgrounds or um, blue backgrounds because actually that echoed who we were as a church quite close to the water um, but if you're in the countryside you know maybe you use a lot of greens or, or different colors um, or something that's completely contrasting but actually what are the colors the palettes the styles that you will be, that you will repeat or um, at least sort of um, use frequently to create a cohesive brand. And again, language, what's the types of words that you want to be using for the people that you want to reach, but also that you do currently reach. Does that all make sense? Yes, good, seeing nods. <laughs> um, so, um, gosh, I've really got my titles messed up for this. Um, <laughs> this should be who's. Um, <laughs> So now to start thinking about the who's of um, who are you talking to and who do you want to reach? So, I mean, this uh, for, for Chris and um, Glenn, it's not that you have to kind of do this, like answer this right now whilst I'm talking, because actually this is something that you do need to take a bit of time to um, sort of do and reflect upon and actually really pray about as well. But um who are you currently talking to so who are the people that you're currently reaching whether that is online and so that does have a bit more of a wider reach but equally actually who are in your immediate uh, on-site community who are the people that are likely to reach so again if you've got a lot of families in your area but actually they're not really coming to church actually is there a bit of a disconnect there mm. um uh where are they um so again, if that is that online or on site, are they, are they coming in? You know, you might have loads of families come to your toddler group, to girls brigade or boys brigade and things like that, guides and stuff, but actually they're not coming on the Sunday service. And there's the thing as well of not just thinking who are you reaching on the Sunday, but who actually do you reach the rest, you know, throughout the rest of the week? Because the church isn't just something that's like an hour and a half on a Sunday. You know, do you have a preschool that you can connect to? Is there a... Um, you know school next door that actually you do a lot of work with so who who do you currently kind of reach and sort of breaking down those groups and, and who they are who are the people that you want to reach um specifically online but it doesn't have to be um exclusively I mean but I'm going to talk kind of uh, particularly about from it from a digital um uh strategy but who are the people that you want to reach so again actually we really want to reach the um families in our community because we do have a really you know toddler group uh, that uses hall or school next door blah, blah blah but they're not coming to church but actually we just want to know we just want them to know that we think about them we pray for them you know they're on our hearts and we do you know we want to work not work with them but we want to sort of 
we want to be a part of their lives. So be realistic about actually what you've got to be able to use um, and or what you've got to use and what platforms you will use. So again, don't think that you're going to have um, a, a daily morning show on Facebook where someone's going to be talking about a Bible story and going to do a whole theatrical show and some teachings and a craft and stuff if your church is only 30 people. I mean, I don't know, maybe there is one person, one or two people who are absolutely gifted in that way and they want to do it. And I mean, that's brilliant. <laughs> if it can. But the likelihood is, is you are not going to be able to deliver something every day. But that's not to say that you couldn't have things of being able to offer occasional weekly resources and things like that. So just be realistic about actually. We can't reach everyone all the time in every way on every platform, because that's just not possible. I mean, no one can really even if you've got a massive team, no one can really do that. So if you're thinking like, right, who are the people that we want to reach? Right. And then to go really in detail of think about an audience avatar. Um, and again, this is a bit of a, um, I don't know, I think churches find this a bit kind of of an icky thing to do because obviously we want to reach the gospel. We want to reach everyone um, and all people and all nations with the gospel, but um, obviously it's not always possible. So really go in detail about who are the people you want to so right we're going to think about a family that we want to reach and we just want to connect with them during the week so that um they know that we're here so come up with a name so actually what are they well maybe um you know it's a single mother and she's got a young kid who's five years old um she has a job as a um a dental nurse somewhere um but they really like um arts and crafts and um they're passionate about um healthy eating you know really go into deep about and and don't you don't want to make it up to a point that it sounds a bit too good to be true or, or just a little bit sort of too far-fetched but actually make a realistic but sort of in depth of this sort of ideal person that you'd want to reach and think about what platforms are they on? So actually if this mum is in her, um, let's say, I don't know, early thirties or something, actually the likelihood is, is she, she might be on Facebook, that she'll probably be on um, Instagram and, you know, she will use YouTube quite a bit. So actually that informs you that maybe those are the platforms that we need to be on. We shouldn't be thinking too much about Twitter. Maybe we should be thinking about Instagram and not that you should know what platform everyone is on, like, because actually, even though that it used to be quite a, um, what's the words I'm saying, specific you know, demographics on each platform, you can't kind of assume that anymore, but actually there's just good indicators um, for what people are on. Uh, so does that, does that bit sort of make sense of kind of come up with these sort of, and you don't just have to do one, you could then sort of create, right, we want this family that we're gonna reach like online, and that's cool. We've got then um, some students who, again, we want to reach online, but maybe that's a bit different, but then actually, no, we really want the student, the, the families to now come on, on site and so we want to be doing something slightly different for them so you can have kind of a couple different avatars but it's really good when then when you go back to something um uh, like trying a new platform well actually our demographics are going to be families or older people they're unlikely to use the latest social media platform as soon as it comes out so actually we don't need to worry about the new one you want to you know think about it when it becomes a bit more mainstream and actually right now we're going to use it rather than jumping on it straight away so it just helps you to kind of work out where your priorities are but also then thinking about what Mike said about sort of um the on-site stuff so banners or um uh press and things like that actually again if you're not by a school you know or, or, or there's loads of families walk uh walk past the church on the way to school well, actually, could you do something around that time or, or have something up that's specifically eye catching for kids or, you know, that is that that's the movements of the people going or if it's work or, or university or something like that. Like, actually, are you thinking about how that um, how those 
how your different avatars <laughs> interact with both your on-site and online uh, presence and what you need to do to interact with them. Right. <laughs> um, so think about actually, again, as I said, you know, how much time you, so the likelihood is as a small, if you're small churches, um, or even if you're you're not a small church, but this is a kind of a new area, it will fall to one person or two people, but it will it will typically fall to the person who's watching this video. Um, how much time actually you can commit to your comms, which is why then I think having a team is so important that it it sort of relieves some of the pressure and responsibility. But equally, I think you have a richer and a stronger um, impact because it it's just not falling all on one person if you've got a particularly busy week because of it's back to school or someone's on holiday and stuff that actually it's not then this one person having to stress about it that it's the the load is shared so think about realistically how much time you could put in you don't want to say like oh right okay so it's a team of three people we are going to do um you know social media posts every day and that includes written content photographs we're going to do like some TikTok videos as well. We're going to make, you know, a half an hour sermon video on a Wednesday to follow up on what's already being done. Um, blah, 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 blah. And actually, is that, you know, if you're already working or you're serving in other ministries across the church, like, how is that possible? I mean, I don't have time for that. And this is my job. Um, so think about really actually what time you have, because that will dictate then what you're able to create. What skills and resources do you have? So again, as Mike said, you know, if you've got people who can take photographs who's in the church, actually, could you could you use their skills in your um, social media posts or the banner for outside? If you've got someone who, who maybe doesn't work as a graphic designer, but is incredibly gifted at it, or maybe a young younger person who's you know going to do graphic design at university. Actually, are you able to offer people opportunities of making something that takes the stress off you and makes the church feel like they're all invested in it? Then the big thing as well to think about with especially social media is it's social; it's not broadcast. Um, and it was the trouble with a lot of churches, I think, as we're coming out of the pandemic. So in the midst of the pandemic, everyone was just trying to kind of do what we could and respond very quickly um, with very little kind of equipment or experience, knowledge. Um, so we did what we had to do. And, you know, that was great. However, now, as we've sort of got a bit more time, we've got a bit more resources and understanding you can't just expect to stream a live service um, uh, not have anyone managing if so if you're doing it on Facebook or YouTube you're not having anyone managing comments there's no addressing um, you know actually looking at the camera and say hi thanks for joining us online if your language again is very exclusive between the people in the building and those watching online it's not really social media then it's just someone watching kind of um you know, a broadcast where they're unable to interact. So you need to make sure that what you're doing is engaging and as well then facilitates that sort of sense of community and helps to build a conversation, not just during whatever it is that you're doing, but also afterwards. So again, if it's, um, I don't know, say you've had a um, summer barbecue or something, you want people to continue talking about it um, or, or have, you know, creating relationships from those things you sharing photos sharing videos um you know having things that that go beyond just that one individual um isolated event or service uh but also don't panic like the it's the worst thing and i think it's the just again the trouble with um online is that so many people feel very overwhelmed with it and they just get very um i can't deal with it all it's so much to do and stuff I mean the first thing is you don't have to do everything so like just that's fine there's there's no point in doing overdoing it um or trying to be on every platform and being very ineffective it's better to be on one or two and do them really well but also you get more familiar as you do so everyone sort of thought oh my gosh zoom this is the most terrifying thing ever now you know we you know when to say someone you're muted you're not talking or you know um, you're aware of, of 
what you need to do because we've used it so much so you get more familiar with something the more you do and it's one thing you said as well Chris of like um sort of being gracious with people when there are mistakes and stuff and not to stress about those situations if you know unfortunately the there's a little bit of the audio cuts out or the camera falls down or something I think people really appreciate the vulnerability and the authenticity that it's not this sort of slick BBC three different cameras and lights and everything like that I think people then when they come to the church they go oh it's quite funny when that fell down you know you had a laugh with it I had a laugh and that's you know I it, it made you endearing to me rather than this sort of like intimidating visual experience that then you sort of don't really want to go along to the church then because it's just a little bit too scary. Um, so yeah, so sort of just have fun with it in, in that way. Um, and the best way to get involved, um, to understand it, you know, I don't actually think that's very good English there. Um, but you just got to use it more to understand it, play around with it, try different things. And so, you know, there's always so many updates on different platforms. And the best way is just to go, well, let's see how this works. Let's try some reels. Let's do some stories. Let's let's try the chat rooms or, or watch parties and stuff. Let's just see how it goes. If it doesn't, fine. But we've played around with it. We've seen it, like how it works. It doesn't work for us. That's absolutely fine. So just sort of like play around as much as possible. Um, and again, that's why I do think that it's an opportunity to get younger people involved because actually they are on the platforms anyway. It's not necessarily that they have to be the one leading it, but of saying, actually, you're on Instagram a lot. Do you, you know, how how can we sort of like create, what's, what's the sort of things that you'd like to see? Or actually, how do we do this? I'm a bit stuck on this. So it sort of, it, it really allows people to get involved uh where you know normally they'd sort of not necessarily be included in a lot of other ministries if they're on social media so yes um right i think maybe we should have a quick break um if that's okay um i'm gonna just stop share just so i can make sure i'm pressing the right thing um but does that all make sense so far yeah yeah i think the other thing i'd probably just add is um yeah, give give time for things. Give it time mm. to bed in. Give it time to to work out, and and don't get put off by by numbers. I think if you've done the work in terms of why you're doing something, and that you think no, this should be working. Yeah, just just give it give it time to do that. I just remember um, uh, one one church that I know, one one community for for which they, they'd done the work in terms of creating a messy church. It was a few years ago now, but I know that they set up their first four messy churches, nobody came. Now, how many of you watching this now would have done something four times, created the, all the crafts, got the food ready, got everything ready and sat mm -hmm. there and nobody came? By the yeah. fourth time, would you have carried on? And by the yeah. time, number five, number six, number seven, people started coming. Um, yeah. So yeah, okay. it's about sometimes letting things bed in. If you've done the work, then it's just sometimes it's about tweaking and letting things um, uh, yeah, grow. Yeah, you and it's it. so much easier in a way with online testing stuff. And like, yeah, if it's, to be honest, but I've done things on the first time and it's really upsetting. Like if it's on site and people don't turn up, whereas online, it's a little bit easier because yeah. once you've created something, you can kind of repurpose it. It's a bit harder to put all the crafts out or make the food, you know, reuse the food in yeah. a way. Um, but with online, actually, it's a lot easier to just repurpose it um, yes. because it's online kind of thing. So, um, yeah, it's it's yeah, it's time as well. Actually, that's a good point. Hmm. Yeah, I think one of the other things is what people don't realize, well, may not realize is that for an online presence as you say it takes time mm -hmm. a lot of these uh people who are very successful on these platforms some of them have been on it for 10 years before all of a sudden it's be you know they're well known and they have an impact um and uh we forget that and i don't know if you're going to mention this later on though is that also because you're regarding your senior listening teams and people that interacting with these platforms is also having a strategy to protect yourself because of course we know we get the, the strange person who uh will attack you and be very abusive to you of how to deal with that and um 
I don't know if you're going to mention that. I uh, hope you are, because that's important as well, because then people run away scared, saying, oh, it's, it, this is terrible, and I uh, don't know what to do with it. Yeah, no, that's a good point. Excellent. So we're back um, for part two of the um, uh, of our workshop of getting started with digital church comms. Hopefully, um, for those of you watching, everything so far has made sense. Um, please do get in touch with us uh, if it doesn't or you just would like us to clarify something. We have had a bit of um, chat um, in, in our break when we were just grabbing um, coffees and stuff. And uh, Chris, I just wondered if you'd be able to just share that story um, that you shared about the Easter um, thing. Cause I think that's a really, um, is it, I'll just say it's a really simple thing that people can do, but I'm sure for, for, for the guy that, that, that made a huge impact. And I just think it's a really encouraging thing to share. Oh, you're muted. Um, it, it's something I actually did, which was, I was late pastor of uh, the church. Uh, we had an Easter service uh, the Friday. Um, I laid at the church uh, to give a bit of atmosphere. But one of the things I went, I went to B&Q and bought some uh, tiles, which were had a stone effect on them and just cut them up. So they were like um, these uh, stones on the, on the floor that people would walk on. Now, uh, my friend who uh, has got a vision impairment, uh, he came in, uh, his wife let, let him, down to the front um, of the church and he says that's the first time he ever felt that he was part of the service because he felt he was walking on the stones because they made a different noise as he was walking the different feel under his feet uh, as though he felt as though he was there uh, when Christ was taking his walk uh, uh, to be crucified and uh, that had a major impact on me and, and has helped me to think if I can't see, I can't hear, what is my service, how is that having an impact on somebody? Mm. Yeah. Thank you, thank you. I mean it's not a digital thing as such but I think it's such a, um, a powerful example of as you said just thinking outside of the box and um, you know what are the little things for us that we can do that would just just make it an incredible difference in people's lives which actually you know it's a fairly simple thing to do but actually um for, for someone can feel that as you say they are involved or, or that it's something just um touches them that little bit more yeah yeah. Thank you. <laughs> enough, yeah i mean it's funny enough um yeah. on that i know isn't it obviously we're, we're sort of looking at digital comms but because everything is so digital these days that sometimes even if you just send somebody a handwritten note you yeah. know, that's sending a letter or a card for which you've actually thought about it yeah the, 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 how our communications how we can do some some really interesting small but very countercultural little moments yeah yeah can make a big difference as this little story has shown yeah yeah and actually i had i had an incident incident experience because it was a nice thing recently of um i'd messaged um a group that i wanted to attend to ask them um you know are you running the rehearsals tonight joining a musical theatre group um and um and that was great and they were responded that was lovely so my online experience was great I turned up I was a bit nervous didn't quite know what was happening uh and I knew some faces I did recognize them but I was like I don't know people's name one woman came up to me she looked at me and she went Hannah and I was like oh, yes and it just she had pieced together the online conversation that we'd had with me walking into a building looking very nervous. And I was like, oh, because okay, like I, I, I feel just slightly connected because you know who I am. And that just sort of actually made for a very welcoming experience. Um, and it's obviously, it's tricky to know the people's names if you haven't messaged them, but it's just a little thing like that, that if you have been messaged, you know, if someone is asking, is your church open, you know, after the summer or what are you doing and stuff that then when they walk in, but people actually, the welcoming team know who've been spoken to and, and or whoever's online sort of goes, oh, actually I recognize that face. I'm going to go up and speak to them because I, I remember them, you know, chatting to them about what was happening at Christmas or something. So yeah it, that was a sort of actually something similar of like it was just a really little thing but it just made me feel really yeah. like that, that importance of welcome it's that importance of welcome yeah. isn't it uh, and yeah validation in a, in the community and um and that's it it is it's those little things that if you can join the dots and make those connections between yeah perhaps somebody has got in touch via social media 
um, yeah, via Messenger on your Facebook page um, and you know their name and you, perhaps you've, you've seen their face and when you do come up, to be able to just greet them by name, wow, you know, you, you are going to, you know, you, you've done it there, that's the welcome. Um, yeah. And that's it, it is a simple thing, but it's quite hard. People often say, I, I, use, I use sort of various mnemonics to try and remember people's names. Um, but yeah, if you if you can work on your name name recall, <laughs> yeah. you're, you're going to do well. <laughs> Just don't have a like behind the church doors where the welcomers are like a kind of like almost like a wanted list of like people we've chatted to that we're <laughs> expecting to see. Don't do that. Don't do that. No, 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 no. no. <laughs> Super right. I will go on to um, the next section. Um, so can you all see? Mm -hmm. that slide yep super so we thought about um who we're currently reaching who we're wanting to reach and then actually right what what can we actually do like what what feasibly are we going to be able to do um and and what's around us and everything so next you want to think about content pillars so what's the actual type of content that we want to create now these are not um internationally known like the categories so promotional educational community you can have them whatever you want it's obviously dependent on uh, like the business the organization like you know for, for those online if it's a personal account or business whatever um it does it does depend so you need to think about actually who again if they're like who you are who you want to be reaching um, and actually, what will what are the types of things you want to share? So obviously, as Christians, we have a, um, a longing to share the gospel. Um, so that could fit in um, educational or engaging, entertaining. But you essentially want to sort of think about, um, is my audio OK, by the way? I've got some like, is that OK? Yeah. Right, no, that's fine. That's just my headphones playing up then. I've just sort of got a bit of... Um, clicking in them um, but you want to think about actually how do things break up um in which they so sort of gospel and sh sort of educational or something being slightly entertaining then you want of things actually well, what are the types of things we've got going on well we've got services we've got um uh groups we've got um uh community activities we rent out the building so actually are there more um you want to and I say it's really reluctantly sell something that you want to get people to come to but equally actually is there something some skill sets within the church family or um uh within groups that use it that actually offers something educational and then um and so uh I'll, I'll, I will go into each of these um in a second but um but then you also because it's social and because you don't want everything to be like really boring you want to have um stuff that is kind of engaging or entertaining um and the thing is as well as you don't and i can't remember the percentage off the top of my head i did have it written somewhere but it's not like you don't you would don't want any more than like 20 to 30 percent um is selling on your social accounts so it's the sort of one of the frustrations I see on when you look on a church's Facebook and it's actually every post is join us on Sunday join us on Sunday join us on Sunday join us on Sunday there's like no online link um it's possibly quite bad graphics it seems to always just be on like a Saturday evening and so you're like oh well you're not engaging me you're not enticing me or you have the churches where they do a um uh summary on a monday or a tuesday of the service um from sunday they share the different groups that are happening throughout the week um but not in a kind of like join us join us but like oh look at these cool things that the brownies did for in the run-up for the remembrance services um you know they've been busy making poppies and things like that um you then have um uh you know testimonies from why someone's actually come to christ and what christmas means to them you know actually the impact of easter on their lives and uh you know really engaging sort of and telling the stories um of the church family highlighting the church family so actually you're showing an accurate representation of who's actually in the church 
Um, but also you're kind of explaining why we believe what we believe. So like essentially you sort of want to, I mean, those th these sort of main three um, pillars are, you could break it down further. You kind of don't want any more than like five, but it helps you to kind of see the different types of content that you could create. And you could, you just then literally make a like, um, ideas dump it all down of going right I'm just going to come up with any type of content idea that I can and um you know that's say it's a um oh, almost what's the word I'm thinking of announcement for your carol service or something so you have that as like one thing so that's a promotional kind of thing but then within that of like the idea you then could have photos of the church setting up what they're you know setting up that for the for the christmas season you could then have someone talking so making a little video saying look we've just decorated we'd love to see you here's a little sneaky preview of the choir of the band practicing for the carol service um uh and even then so and and then that almost then goes into kind of like engaging and entertaining because people are feeling like they're a part of it. They're seeing it all develop further. And so by just like dumping loads of ideas down, thinking like again throughout the whole year and what you could do, what you can do, what you'd love to do, um, it helps you to then be able to pull out stuff rather than going, oh my goodness, it's Monday, what on earth do I post? Whereas if you've got these pillars, you've got these bins to pull out of actually you're then not panicking when it comes to it um one of the things i'll just sort of add hannah on the uh, announcement side and this worked really well when i was sort of in local church and again it's working out which is the best sort of social stream for this is that anytime particularly when we had our sort of monthly messy churches that i or carol service anything that was sort of slightly special out the ordinary the announcements would always be accompanied by setting up a dedicated event page yes. where I would then invite all of the people in the community for which I think they would be interested in coming plus others that perhaps we've connected with and then you invite them to say are you going to come and then yes. quite easily quite early on you'll know that some people that are yes no maybe you can put announcements in that event as well and then you can you've already started some digital interaction about the event early on you can post on there you can post on your main feed as well and people feel that they're part of it beforehand and also it helps with planning as well particularly if yeah if you're doing something yeah yeah when you're doing something that's a bigger family service or a messy church or equivalent these days that um, you get an idea of roughly how many people are going to turn up and yeah, that's it's always helpful <laughs> but it is helpful that's it because you have got you you, you put investment in terms of craft and uh, people and uh, yeah yeah food and all of that sort of thing but putting creating some interaction with the event and the announcement can be really successful for yeah. you and again it's back to what you were saying in terms of that planning you know that these things are coming up each month you know what's coming up at easter in the summer christmas and you can actually have all these laid out in the diary well in advance and you just go okay this is what we're going to be promoting now and announcing and it's yeah. uh, it becomes a yeah a sort of a joy not a chore totally. yeah definitely and things like announcements are quite easy to do because you know there's a poster we're just going to share it here's some information things like the testimonies or storytelling or um addressing frequent questions or things like that actually that does does take a bit more time but actually if you you're at a point of having a bit more time and resources actually it's something that that requires the prep and the sort of time and effort of doing it but actually that stuff will reach so much further because people feel you're being again that kind of genuine and vulnerable and authentic of going actually this is who we are and this is why we believe what we believe um plus also actually adding to sort of your idea of um announcements and events and stuff if you take photos or videos or something so that when you have the next messy church coffee morning thing actually you've got photos and saying look we had such a lovely time last week last month you know we'd love to see you again and and you're sort of weaving then everything into the other and you're not having to create stuff necessarily from scratch because you've got all of these things already um so yeah does um that make sense for um you chris
Good, super, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> I, like, I like the pause there. Uh, yeah, <laughs> the suspense. Um, and and as well, sorry, just to, just to add to this as well for um, pillars, of do it like to begin with and just dump as much down. But equally, as people share ideas or you see somewhere else, you know, add to it and just it becomes a kind of open document that you continually add or take away or you sort of go well that really worked really well well we need to do that again next year or actually let's do that again in six months time and and you know do don't just do it once and then never look at it because it is something that you need to kind of constantly go back to um because it will be helpful so then the content calendar. So we've, we, we know who we're talking to. We've got an idea of that. We, we know the types of things that we're going to do, um, all the messages that we're going to share. So now we kind of, um, from there, thinking about kind of what platforms that we want to reach. So actually kind of we've got an idea, right, this is the sorts of ones that, that we're happy on, that, the, that we know that the people that we want to reach are on or that, are, that we are reaching are on. So putting together a content calendar, again, is something that you're like, oh, why do we need to do it all? Why, why do we need to do it now? Can't I just do it all on the fly? And can I say this from experience as someone who frequently ends up doing a lot of stuff like very reactionary, it's so much more effort to do it reaction, to create posts in, not even reaction, but just create posts as I'm then in the platform rather than going, I've planned this out. I know the message that I'm going to be sharing. I know why I'm doing this. This comes under this content um, pillar. It's addressing this um, audience. Um, and it's for this thing within our kind of actual bigger strategy as a church or an organization. So having a content calendar, again, it's a lot of, it's not a lot of work, but it is a bit of a faff to begin with. But once you've got it actually, and you become used to using it regularly, it does help. And again, because if you, you should be a team. If something happens to you and you've got all the ideas in your head, well, then the content's not going to be going out. And so, whereas if you have a calendar, actually, if something happens to you or you're on holiday, or actually it just, you know, sharing the load that people know, oh, actually, this is where we're going. This is the types of things we're going to um, put in. I've been in, no, I don't think it was really a church situation, but I've been like co managing social media platforms with people and I, was meant to be the lead and I'd had scheduled like in my mind that I was going to be doing this this and this post and I'm posting these things and at the same time someone else is posting something else and it just then becomes a very messy um unaligned um online presence and it just made us look a little bit silly so having sort of if everyone knows right this is what we're promoting for the next few weeks this is the message that we're going to be doing this is what's happening on each platform people know that they're not going to go oh can you promote the um <laughs> bric-a-brac sale tomorrow and you're like well no because I should have known about this weeks before to be able to properly kind of push it out to people it's just going to look sort of a little bit awkward now so anyway um have a year plan and it's not that this needs to be sort of um hugely in detail but sort of look at the year whether you want to do it kind of like set September to August or January to December however you want to break it up but have an idea of kind of um what your year looks like so again if like actually whether there's leadership gaps because people are on holiday or sabbatical or something um what are key dates for the church so obviously Christmas and Easter holidays are there any specific bank holidays you know with the funeral coming up on Monday actually um is that something obviously we couldn't really schedule that a year in advance but actually what would a key date be um uh so with his majesty's coronation actually is that likely now to be something that we need to keep in our diaries especially for you know the first few years where probably people would like to bring it up again or um you know this week of kind of like mourning actually is this something that we will think about again next year um in a reflection on reflection kind of thing so what are key dates kind of like nationally um is it regionally so is there something specific that happens you know arts festivals or, or something that that kind of not it doesn't need to be everything that goes on um tiff i think kind of locally we have a carnival week and that's a huge thing for the whole of the area actually that's a big thing for churches because there's suddenly all of these visitors coming there's people who are probably 
likely a lot of them will be Christians, actually, what are things that can be done that, that the church can interact with? So not that you need to respond, um, like put down the response to those things, but just have a kind of like year calendar of thinking, right, these are the things we need to be thinking about. Then you break it down into kind of um, either quarterly, seasonally, um, which is monthly anyway, but sort of, you know, uh, quarterly, seasonally or monthly. Um, monthly, obviously, you, you can go in a bit more depth and it seems a little less overwhelming. So normally I'd like break it down a bit more, um, but I thought I'd just sort of, it's a bit easier. You get the gist of what I'm saying. <laughs> and then you go, right, okay, four September and October, we are going to do a um, sermon series on these things. Um, we have got these groups starting up again. Um, we know that so and so and so and so are away. So we've got to do something a bit different. Um, we've got um, harvest coming up. So we want to address that. We've got, um, I'm trying to think of any other big things that are happening September, October time. I can't really think, um, you know, um, these things and these things going on. So these are right. This is how we're going to respond to it. Right. We're blocking out these posts um, highlighting the sermon series. So we want to kind of bring that up a couple of times a week and we're going to ask people to come to church. Um, you know, we want to factor in if we're doing a harvest collection. What does that look like? How are we going to promote that? So in that one, you 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 don't have to like write out the exact text, but you sort of have a, then a clearer idea. Right, actually, last two weeks in September are just very busy. Let's just not worry, stress about anything else. Right, okay, we need to start thinking about Christmas promotion. Um, it still feels a bit of a dirty word to say. Um, uh, in middle of October, because we've planned everything right now, we need to actually put up, as Mike said about like um, Facebook events, we're going to put up all of our events in October. So people know they've got time and we're going to go, oh, it's early, but, um, you know, here is what's happening. And so you really know kind of actually where are you going online? Well, if we're getting the flyers printed, then we can put a post out about, oh, we've collected them. And it sort of it then all interlinks with with how the what's going on actually on the church on the site there. Uh, uh, and I sort of I, I sort of add to that, uh, Hannah. You've already sort of indicated, and it's something that I have to do all the time, sort of in in, in my role nationally. It is I, I always coin the phrase managing the noise. So you you have to quite what's really helpful about this is that you can plan this out, but you can then also see in advance where in fact you're really busy. Mm -hmm. what, you can end up um, basically shooting yourself in the foot if you've got too many things coming out that are quite confusing. If you've got yeah. harvest coming in and then you think, oh well, I've already put stuff about Christmas, or I'm actually still talking about the summer. We've got the Bible study series going out. You can put a whole load of stuff in that it ends up just being noise to people. Um, yeah. And especially if also you're sending out emails and you've got some flyers and you're doing just being careful about thinking, right, this is we want to give something some space. So if yeah. you think, right, well, in fact. We, we've got something coming up at the end of September for harvest. We've got to make sure that our, our, our comms the focus is all orientated yeah. around that. And then you, you move. It doesn't mean you don't do other things, but you have to give stuff time to breathe. Um, oh, absolutely. It gets lost. Yeah, absolutely. And as well, kind of thinking a little bit further on over Christmas, so over December. Um, okay, we've planned it all out. We know what we're going to put out. Well, you do have to start kind of like thinking a month um, or two ahead. So you're thinking slightly about January, but equally you don't want to leave it to the last week to be thinking about the next month. Um, and it's like, I keep saying it's the worst thing about everything. It's not the worst thing, but you don't want to have like a really cool, busy September, October, November, December, and then just do nothing in January and February because A, you are absolutely knackered because it's been a ridiculously busy season. You've had no time to um, plan any content. You've had no time to create any content. So kind of going, right, well, we know that, yeah, November and December are going to be really busy times. Right, we're going to start thinking early November, just a bit about what's happening in January so we can put some stuff out but it doesn't have to be intense and we're not good we know that we're not going to have time to create a video series um 
<laughs> over December on top of everything else that's happening. So yeah, as you say, Mike, you know, managing the noise, but equally knowing actually what's following that. And okay, is like, you know, there's suddenly it's really, really quiet, but are you planning stuff that you're not kind of then panicking in the midst of actually that last Christmas week? Oh, we've got to be putting stuff out. No, like because you've planned what's happening and what's coming up, and it's fine to sort of um not all the time post, 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 but that you've got kind of but there is stuff coming out, so you're not suddenly just sort of um you know absolutely silent for for January and February. Yeah, certainly what what I I, I work on obviously you've given the different ways certainly from my own experience of work, and this is where I do this sort of cross team nationally is that. I have a quarterly meeting where I see where we plan that where we look at the next three months. Mm. Um, and I think in church context, yeah, you could sort of do this sort of late. So your example for, for the, the start of the year, post Christmas, perhaps the end of November, just before you get busy with Christmas, yep. you actually then sit down and saying what we're doing January, February, March, and you plan that out. And you do that before you get into the business of December, but you're, you're well ahead of the game there. Yeah. You can plan stuff out. You've got a few weeks just to put things in place. And then again, yeah, you'd, you'd come to sort of end of February, start of March, where you'd actually then be looking at April, May and June. And that will obviously be including things like Easter, but yeah. you always sort of front run the... Um, yeah the, the the sort of the next quarter it has been sort of quite helpful for me because you can look at the noise levels you can look at where things are perhaps quieter where you can give things more space and it's a, it's a more enjoyable experience and, and it's linked up and strategic yeah yeah no definitely um and and especially i think that that december january time you've had you know we do so much stuff over christmas and it's so wonderful and then suddenly to not put anything out it's it's as if you're sort of like oh we're not that bothered about connecting with you people that came to all of our services and events and you know christmas things and stuff yeah we're not that bothered whereas actually if you're still putting stuff out and it's still kind of engaging or it's asking people questions you know you could say um you know rather than getting like what presents did Santa bring you but be like actually what was a blessing that you found over Christmas because then actually you're taking that spirit of um enjoyment over Christmas into January people are going oh do you know what I really loved was just our family time together where we watched TV and you know we watched all the old classics and stuff like that and it's you know you're you're bringing that joy that people experience but equally you're sort of creating you're you're asking people something that they need to respond to rather than again just going right so we're over Christmas now we're going to do alpha and we that's all we're going to like shout and scream about and it just again it feels like you sort of like entice people into the building and now you're trying to trap them into selling something um not so you shouldn't promote or do an alpha in um in January but it's sort of just about managing actually what's the type of things that you put out yeah, um, and then sort of related to that, Hannah, as well, and we, we talked <laughs> about this right at the start, there was always the danger post-Christmas that uh, people forget about the comms channels and that, yeah, yeah, come, come the March or April or the middle of the year, the first things that people find on your website or your social media um, is the fact that you've done Join us for our Christmas. camel service. <laughs> yeah, for our camel service. Um, uh, and so, yeah, this is, is so important at the start of the year. Like you said, you can follow on from Christmas, go into those New Year initiatives, but you quickly move on and you remove uh, where necessary stuff that's actually <laughs> yeah. now out of date. Nothing yes. worse than out of date content, yes. particularly at Christmas. Oh, dear. Yes. Um, <laughs> yes. Um, so then so we've got the kind of like um, more strategic broad view um, stuff happening throughout the year and then go into a weekly one um, a plan so I've got a um, can you see my cursor by the way no can you see that move no nope. okay no worries oh, I can um, now I can now can can we, now. okay no that's fine I just didn't want to be like hey you can see I'm pointing at it if then um, it wasn't actually coming up so um, and I've got on the next slide it kind of in action and um, this is just something I use you don't have to do it exactly like this but I have a kind of um schedule like this of like the date um the pillar so not that it needs to be exactly like that but it's just again so I can see oh I've been very promotional this week or I've been very um 
too entertaining and too lightheartedness actually maybe I should put some more stuff that's like um spiritual nourishment or whatever so it's just that's more sort of like for an indicator for you to kind of look at topics so again are we looking at kind of Sunday service is it activities is it an event um if it's like harvest so actually we've got a whole harvest campaign um so it's to do with harvest so then that, that it could then be what well, we're selling the service we're um pushing for donations we're um just trying to actually you know it's after harvest and we wanted to celebrate how much we've raised or you know we were able to take this food down to the food bank and so like that's scheduled in because then that's still like part of that campaign so again these these the pillar and the topic column are just helpful kind of um for you to kind of be able to reflect upon then i have um three columns and so these are then just repeated and you can have as many going along as you um need for as many platforms as you use so i have the kind of the platform and then i just put the platform name um alongside it and then you have the text so um here let's stick with harvest um join us for our harvest service on I don't know when harvest is um I don't know, 15th of October, Sunday the 15th of October I don't think that's the date but um you know um we will be it will be an all-age service or a family service with um a, a picnic or it should bring and share lunch afterwards or something uh, but we also will be connect collecting for uh the local food bank that was a very long piece of text um so let's just say this was Facebook um, so that's a very long piece of text. You could have an image of either your sermon series banner or um, if you were going to do an actual campaign or just for that Sunday, you could have like a poster done and a link to say the on your website, you could have a specific like harvest page that's just up for a bit um, that's just kind of sharing what the plan is for harvest and sort of maybe tips that people could do um, for things to reflect upon on harvest for example then let's say um, I use Instagram so obviously a link isn't really going to work on Instagram so the image is going to be more important so we don't really want a poster perhaps might do like a nice um look of the church with some like a little food parcel or um the poster alongside um uh, with some other images of um previous harvest festivals and stuff and um or harvest services um and then text because text isn't visually seen um or maybe isn't as interacted with on instagram um you know you might put that but you might sort of put some other um emojis in and just make it a little bit eye-catching or you might just keep it really basic and say keep an eye out for things to come soon and then so on and so on and you'd add other ones in there so if i just show you so this is like <laughs> A previous one <laughs> um for a church that i ran so it, it, it's going to be really tricky to see just for me to fit if it was for me to fit everything in but can you kind of see that we can see the blocks of, blocks of it yeah and yeah. um, so i've got the dates so um and put the actual date dates there but i just put the days and then um uh, sunday service upcoming christmas program coffee morning uh, last of the community coffee so that says coffee morning tomorrow last of the community coffee mornings community questions carol service information carol service or something so then i had youtube um so that was sort of just it would be the live stream on the website we need to ensure that the program page is linked on home page um and then facebook twitter instagram stories facebook instagram and so essentially then i could i um had sort of right, join us online and on site this morning for our sunday service and then it was a link to the live stream um and then it was the same for twitter um and then on stories obviously because you can't share a link to stories we can but like it didn't work as good we would sort of be behind the scenes one second my dog's just um oh my, goodness. my dog like um dreams and yips a lot <laughs> Um, and um yeah so it sort of helped me to see actually what was going on so we had it was a really busy week we had so we did have a lot of things to put out but was trying to make it kind of like 
a uh, few days before people know knew what was happening it was information so not just of going oh come along come along come along but actually going if you'd like to join us here are things you might want to know um and actually this was sort of in the middle of the pandemic so we were like very conscious of making sure people knew about the safety aspects of it and you know these was this was what we would be doing um and then something fun because it was friday question time what's your favorite christmas chocolate you know if you're gonna get something to get some engagement is ask about like the best biscuit the best or the worst pizza toppings things like that that is the way to kind of like get people engaged get people commenting and and just helps to break up a, a um social media feed that is sort of like constantly just trying to get you to come to the building and stuff so that's um uh yeah a bit of a sort of like a sample one and this was just the beginning of it the, i would then put in the graphics i'd have more links to it and then once i'd scheduled them i'd change the colors um so and but also that you can create it how you want so actually if you want um uh, your youtube to go on the end and you want twitter to go up first or actually you want your website to go first you can completely change it around i'll share the links at the end but i have got a link to the template that i use um that people are welcome to copy um that template or use that template so i will share that at the end um but again the point is is that if if this sort of doesn't exactly work for you just change it try, test out different ways um you know move it around because it, it, it's all about what works for you there's no point in you feeling that you have to do it this way and then actually it doesn't work because the point is is that it's meant to be useful and make the whole process of content creation easier um all okay mm -hmm. <laughs> it's sort of um yeah that's the kind of like um chunky stuff you have to do beforehand because that stuff will make the future stuff infinitely more easier as mike said already of like actually just having that that ease of like a quarter before or at least a couple months before of just going right we know how we're going into this next season we know what we're creating we know what's the type of things we want to be saying um so yeah um any any questions or anything from you chris one of the things that um i'd really like to see in many churches is their calendar which roughly uh puts the detail for the year because what i tend to find is that uh, even by quarters um i tend to miss things because i'm involved in something else or i've been asked to go and preach somewhere and i, I don't I, i'm trying to look at the church calendar but there's nothing there so i don't know yeah. if something special is going on so that would be great if if, <laughs> if churches would get more behind that i other th think as you, you sort of mentioned this i think we also ignore national events to our peril mm. i mean if you go back uh, if you remember it um the when princess diana died and of course now we've got the, our queen has died that that's a huge opportunity for our churches to open and provide something uh which um you know which isn't happening uh, in a lot of places uh, which because there's a need in the community a lot of people are mourning but they don't know how to express it yes. yeah or be stroke regarding it and um uh you know it, it's it, it's it's a great shame um, a typical uh, example is a little girl who you may have heard of it on the national press uh, found a pond near us in Pontypool and she was rushed because they thought you know she was going to survive to England the specialist hospital uh, while individuals inputted it to that the churches didn't mm. so it's something else perhaps that churches shouldn't be afraid of doing to say we're, pr we're praying for this little girl as a church yeah. uh, which means then the church cares a bit for its community so um something else for us to i think we should be more aware of and in, involved with really and that comes back to that 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 sort of that whole listening team it's not just a general background listening it's saying this is happening right now this is important mm. to our community um 
<clears throat> and yeah, the church being on the forefront of yeah what is happening and what is important to people there and then, and uh, mm -hmm. yeah, the church then thinking about yeah what is what is ours to do in this situation uh, mm -hmm. and leading on it, helping to lead. Mm -hmm. And and on that kind of um, I don't, it's not necessarily a political commentary, but if it's a social thing that's happened or, or a national uh, that we don't necessarily have to put out lots of things and and some deep theological spiritual reflections and lots of things sometimes it can be just appropriate to be like the church is open we're or we're praying as a church family for these people this person this community you know whatever's happened um the church will be open at these times and literally just leave it at that that's but you are acknowledging that a situation has happened but you're not kind of trying to almost um i can't think of the word hijack it of trying to push your agenda or something because actually yeah for for right now maybe we don't need to put out some big thing about the queen and you know she was a christian and we serve the king of kings and like we don't really need to do that maybe we just need to be like actually we can all experience grief in a different way um you know we will be having a book of condolences or actually we're just going to be the church will be open there will be some music and you can just come in and pray and process however you need to and and that's it and there's no sort of like pushing yeah an agenda you're sort of more just going we are here for the community to serve and and then there again you're just connecting with people on their level rather than trying to um sort of hijack things yeah, yeah. yeah. um yeah uh but on the other side it's equally nice to do celebrate the things that do that that are lovely and that have happened so um you know the jubilee or um olympics or something like that you know have some have some fun with with things that that are nice that you want to celebrate and there's you know if something like the olympics say people will be watching that so make okay not make a commentary on it but do something and be like what's your favorite sport what are you most looking forward to something like you know with the the royal wedding uh just going back now at the beginning uh of the, the, this, this century, um, what we did as a, as a church, um, we organised a, a, a meal for lunch. Uh, we projected it on the screen the whole wedding, so everybody we could get together as a community. Uh, I mean, the uh, coronation is coming up, ideal opportunity, isn't it? Everybody mm -hmm. can get together, have a celebration. It's great to have celebrations. Yeah, yeah, yeah. no, that's true. Um, yeah, so lots of ideas of things, um, which is good though. And I think, again, this is why it's important to have a team because you could say something and then I think of something and, and it grows from there. Whereas if you're just on your own trying to kind of come up with ideas, it can make it a bit, um, you know, either you just don't think of it or you haven't seen it and stuff. So, yeah. So creating the content. Um, so again, what important dates do you have coming up? So, um, uh, I'm just trying to think of something that's a Christmas. Let's just say Christmas. And we have a calendar of events happening. Um, right. So we've got a um, craft, Christmas craft thing happening. We've got a carol service. We've got a crib service. We've got a um, midnight service and then a Sunday service, let's say. Right, so these are things we've got to be thinking about. What are we going to create for them? What content sources can we already use? So, um, what what have we got well we've got posters we've got some pictures from last year um we've got a couple of um say photos and things from the bu have shared some free resources um no pressure mike <laughs> um we've got um uh, some again bu um prayers or something or or some some fun activity right messy church have created these things or the youth and um CYF associates around um, uh, the BU have created these things that we can do at this. Right, okay, so these are the things that we want to be sharing out. Okay, so that helps to break up these things, right? The posters, when are we going to be sharing those out? Could we create a video whilst, you know, do a time lapse of the church being set up for the for the carol services or something, or at the um, 
uh, craft day. Um, uh, I can't think of the words. Yeah, someone who's into photography. Again, so we know that there's this guy who likes photography. Right, could you just come and take some photos for us and, you know, get some bits to like share out throughout the rest of the week? Um, could you do a little video of asking people, you know, what's their favorite thing about Christmas and then you can compile that into something or you could have it written up on a board or something and people just write it down and you could share that up afterwards um you know if it's a poem or something for or a bible reading you could actually just write that out and so mix the styles up so it's not just um poster like a photo of a poster and like two join us for the um, carol service and that's all that goes up actually if you mix it up then people are more likely to do it and something like facebook well it's all the social platforms but something like facebook will um particularly because it offers you so many different ways of um publishing content it will favor your uh page if you are doing different things because actually the algorithm then identifies oh you're mixing it up a bit that's good we know people like that um so you know mix it up and as well you don't want to see the same thing over and over again it will it just helps people will engage with it if you mix it up and stuff um but get inspiration from anywhere um well, everywhere and anywhere so you know big hot topic um thing for Christmas is the John Lewis advert you know could you share that out and be like oh officially Christmas is here you know and make a joke of like now can we start telling you all the exciting things we have got coming up actually they've done some I don't know maybe their theme is particularly nice um, or exciting <laughs> you could take inspiration said right well we are challenging everyone to um, what was the one last year was about friendship or something like that it was quite lovely and um, you know what we were challenging everyone um, on our Facebook page or you know social we want to see um, who's your best friend please share a picture you know what are we celebrating um, you know what's what's your most um, oh, oh I just had a really good idea there um, so you know the um, the king's wise men gave um, Jesus at the nativity scene gold, frankincense, and myrrh. The whole thing about like, um, is it in bleak midwinter? Like, give him my heart, and it's about you know giving Jesus like presents and treasures and stuff. But it's like we want to know what's your you know what's a treasured possession for you. It doesn't have to be the most expensive thing, but actually what's a you know what's a really important thing for you. Um, you know and again you're helping people to just think kind of a little bit more further than oh christmas all that presents actually could it be a family member is like a really important thing to you anyway <laughs> but it's sort of like looking at you know and it sounds really like again cringy to be like the shops especially things like john lewis are really good at christmas because obviously they want to get everyone in the building to sell them things because they want you to buy what can you take from what the type of content they're creating and bring it into church like actually what are they doing to create an exciting experience um for their customers what can you take to do something like that and obviously we don't all have the budgets of john lewis but you know what's an idea that you could take from that um you know uh, certain hashtags or or, or yeah again styles of, of of colors or content um and if you make if you're doing anything visual, actually an audible audio, just make sure that they're not pixelated or with big watermarks. Try to use as um, your own photos wherever possible. Make sure they're that high quality. But equally, if you need to use uh, photos from other places, so something like Unsplash or Pixabay or Pexels or something, just make sure that they are. You know, you've got the permission to use them and um, because it is nothing worse especially for something like Christmas where it's a you know it's a really important thing or Easter and then have something with like a big watermark across um the background of it it can um kind of ruin that slightly is that all okay <laughs> um oh I said the wrong thing 
yeah, I think I'll still record it. Right, platforms. Um, again, I'm aware now, so I've chatted for like a long time and I'm aware now that um, we, <laughs> we still wanted to talk ourselves. So I will just run through this. So thinking about the platform. So Facebook, the biggest opportunities that you can do in one platform, uh, obviously you've got profiles as individuals in which is predominantly all of the users. You've then got, say, as churches, pages, um, and or groups, um, though I would recommend a church have a page and then have subgroups um, within it to allow that conversation, but the pages allow you to sort of um, be that front facing, that front window of the church um, that allows people to see what's going on. Whereas the groups is kind of like the inner rooms where people can chat and be a bit more open um, with each other because they know who's in the group. And again, you've got like videos that you can do, which can be either like pre-made ones or lives. I mean, Facebook Lives is really good um, if you're doing something like setting up and you just want to go and chat to people. Um, photos, again, you know, really utilize if you're doing events, taking photos and sharing them afterwards, asking for photos from people. Written content, so that could be short form, long form. Long forms, not as popular. This is all going to video because we're becoming quite lazy as online users and we just want to watch videos rather than have to read things but actually sometimes written content longer written content longer form can be really powerful and then links they don't really like it if you're taking people away from the platforms but the fact is that you can share links in um, and that can be really helpful to people you don't kind of don't want to be posting more than once a day um, but again you've also got um, stories and things like that and reels so you can kind of share the sort of um, more behind the scenes stuff without needing to go publicly on the page. Twitter so short form kind of more newsy styles you can post a lot more and it allows more of a conversation and, and a chattiness with people um, rather than sort of like formal postings and um, obviously you've got photos, uh, videos, links, hashtags Twitter is sort of the main place for hashtags, I'd say. Um, but also, actually, in terms of just finding content, um, lists can be really powerful. Um, so having like lists of like churches in your area or just the associations or um, Baptist churches within um, sort of an area or something that actually, if you're just trying to find out what other people are doing, you know, if there is some churches that do really good online content, you can have them in one place where actually you are able to um, sort of go, right, I'm in my content mindset this morning. I just need to go and see what some people are creating. Let's just have a look at that. And it's rather than scrolling through everyone on your Twitter, you've got them kind of in a designated place. Also really good to see what's trending. So again, if you're needing to be responsive to topical issues, um, again, such as this last week, actually, it's been very informative about um, certain things like the queue um, or just what's going on with um, members of the royal family visiting and stuff like that. That actually, it can be very helpful of just finding out what's happening. Um, so if you need to respond to something, actually just looking up on there um, is useful. Though, again, you kind of need to take like the new stuff with a pinch of salt that it's not always going to be. Well, it will slant towards your algorithms or not necessarily always the most accurate of stuff but it's just a useful indicator and um, again post kind of three or four times a day um that more kind of um chatty style i think it's quite good if you're looking to connect with local businesses um say local leaders counselors things like that or just connect nationally with people it's really good uh but you're not necessarily going to connect with your local community as such, because it's not necessarily where everyone um, congregate online, if that makes sense. Um, Instagram, you've then got more of like the younger demographics, so not exclusively. Um, I don't know, that's the kind of the same with TikTok, but you've got videos, photos, graphics, you've got stories. It's a very visual space. So again, it's a fantastic place to look if you're looking for ideas, if you're wanting to connect with younger people in terms of from an educational point that you could create videos or kind of scrolling and uh, carousel visuals and things that you can create information very in a very engaging way. You kind of, once a day is 
good that you don't have to like you could do it a couple times a week that is equally as fine but you don't want to be really posting on the main feed more than once a day um though again it has stories and that's a great way of sort of having that kind of more behind the scenes stuff tiktok feel like i have to mention it because it is the place where a lot of people are now and that isn't just for younger people um i mean i i love it um but my mother-in-law also loves it and we talk about like house um house hacks and stuff like that of like oh i saw this really useful tip of this and so it isn't just younger people and it's not just people dancing actually it can be a very useful um platform but i'm not saying that everyone needs to be on it um, but in terms of videos um you can um you know you can create really valuable um things uh but you kind of don't want to be sell it, selling so much in it because the likelihood is you're not going to have a kind of like regional reach it'll be more kind of global five to ten times a week I mean that is a lot I don't do it that much um but it sort of it does favor those that post a lot YouTube technically not social media but it is sort of bigger search engine obviously you could have sermons um, you can do shorts as well. You could do kind of, again, the whole kind of what does Christmas mean to me was my testimony. You could create these kind of like playlists of stuff that isn't just here's a Sunday service. And um, I'll just mention it on here quickly. <laughs> um, don't just title things. Um, St. John's Church, Saturday, the 18th of September and just leave your title as that, ask a question or answer a sort of say the question that you're going to be answering in your service, because if people are searching for something, they want to know something, they're not gonna be searching for your church name or the date. So create something that's gonna be engaging. Um, and then kind of like slightly less again on the, it's not quite the socials, but it's in terms of your digital and how you communicate your website that's your land you own that if facebook goes down if instagram goes down all my content is lost and that's sad but the, my website is less likely to go down or i can put more procedures in place to respond to if a website my website goes down um you can have so much information on your website and as mike said already keep it updated make sure that you've not got your join us for our carol service 2017 on there um you know or you've got your past your minister um from 20 years ago or the photo is him 20 years ago when he still had a full head of brown hair or something you know make sure that actually is an accurate representation <laughs> um so you laugh mike i have seen it no, and i, I did it. <laughs> so, <laughs> I went, mm, that doesn't quite look like uh, the most up-to-date -date photo of you <laughs> um, to keep it up to date. You know, and, and again, it's thinking sort of what we've said already about diversity and things. I have seen churches use stock images of a um, tick all the boxes diversity group. Um, and like it looked a lovely photo, but I knew for a fact their church did not look like that. And I thought, ah, oh, if someone sees that photo and thinks that's your church and then they're going to turn up and really, really isn't, that would irritate me more than just seeing an accurate picture of the church. Um, so yeah, keep it up to date and keep it accurate. Mm -hmm. and, and then link to everything. So again, of like, not that you have to, um, not if you put in links, but you know, if you what's going on so as you said already Chris of like you know a full calendar actually what events are happening what does go on in your church so I know a church that they do various different activities or, or this is the church is used for different activities wouldn't be able to find it on their on their website which is a shame because actually if I've moved to the area if I found a church oh they also have brownies oh they have a, like a school next door that they're connected with oh they do this and this thing it's it it's not that you have to put loads of information down or you could link it to the another the school page, but you're at least highlighting and going, these are all the things that we're linked to. Um, email and um, as Mike said already, sort of newsletters, um, they can be really valuable in sharing news, especially for those that are not um, for special newsletters, if it's printed, of uh, those who are not digitally as engaged online but also it's a good place of collating all the information to go right this is our 
fortnightly newsletter, our monthly newsletter. Here are all the things that are coming up. You can find more details in the coming weeks on social media on the website. But it's a great place of like being able to kind of like collate everything. The only thing that you kind of need to think about a bit more in terms of newsletters, if you're sending or emails, is kind of from GDPR of just making sure that, you know, social media it's open to everyone and that is for them to that you know you run the risk of that and stuff but also you have to be thinking about who you can't don't want to put too much personal information on social media necessarily whereas in emails you can because you know who it's going to but equally you just want to make sure that everything gdpr we don't need to go into it but it's just like that is just an extra factor to think about and then going slightly back to what Mike said at the beginning about like holistic approach and thinking online and on site, who are your local connections? So what local press do you know? You know, what local community groups? Because if you're doing a Christmas service or you in your Christmas program um, and actually you are going to be doing food hampers for families in need. Do you know community groups that work with um disadvantaged families do you know them who you know from the people within the schools who um work with groups in areas of deprivation and you could say actually look we'd really like to highlight that we're doing this can you share this out amongst your uh families who who actually this might be a really really vital resource over christmas and then also with them being able to and it's not about highlighting that you've done it, but sort of going to the local newspaper and saying, actually, do you know what? You know, two weeks before Christmas, we gave out 100 food parcels to families, families in need. Um, or we've opened our church during uh, December for those who are suffering with um, not suffering, those who are being heavily affected by the cost of living crisis. We really wanted to open the church up. Actually, you know, we've had people come in and we've done this and that. So being able to share that story is a great way to show the public that the church cares for their local community. So again, if you've got those connections that you know who to share stories with. Um, I'm guessing most people have got most platforms or at least a lot of platforms. And so we said already about kind of keeping everything up to date, um, but sort of just little ways of making sure that they are improving again of like changes in services or groups. So if things aren't happening over the summer, make sure that you put a notice saying things are not happening in the summer or we're on a reduced program or when our back, we're ramping up stuff. We've got loads of stuff on over December and, um, or Easter or you know actually we have got building works on so we're not doing anything on site for the next month do people know that are you making sure that there is be there is information if people search for you and photos or videos of people you know try to put up a, a recent church gatherings or videos where it's sort of not from the beginning of 2020 when we all started and that was it and um, you know to the pandemic and there's no more um there are there are no more photos or videos since so actually things are, have changed since um so yeah just up to date this is like the biggest thing to improve your platform um understand your analytics so i said at the beginning like you don't need to be like focused on your analytics you don't need to really be overly um determined by your analytics but it's a good way of understanding actually who was the demographic that are engaging with us so like facebook it tells you um the kind of ages of those that are engaging with the platforms where they are so actually if you used to have like we don't have that many people in our village connecting with us but there's a lot of people from the nearby town and get all the other way you know the town aren't but the village are also engaging actually could we do something with them um you know these videos have worked really well oh these links didn't work so well this style you know the, the photos with people's faces in worked really well because people like seeing that sort of thing whereas just the landscapes or the, the repetitive ones they're becoming less popular so it's just good to kind of like get an indication from your analytics and engage with others so again don't just push of sell 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 um the service try to mix it up like comment share things from your local community especially if you're trying to build a kind of local presence and connection um so whether that's local news or um uh, other charities that work locally other churches it's always nice to sort of you know 
support other churches, the mission partners that, you know, you're particularly, um, is something happening with um, uh, BMS? Could you share that out? You know, they're recruiting for some stuff. Actually, it's a really nice thing to say, hey, look, we support them. Would you apply for this? Or if not, just pray for them. Um, BU, share things from the BU. That's like really nice. <laughs> You know, Mike works so hard to create content. I actually like and share and comment on the BU stuff. That's like a really lovely way to show support to Mike, but also actually just to go, look, we realize that we're not just one isolated group. We are part of a bigger and wider family. And the same for your associations as well. Um, if they are online and do share stuff out. Um, but, you know, engage with others. Don't just make it all about, all about sort of you as an individual church all the time um so hmm, that's not what I expected to see that never mind um remember <laughs> um have a plan and a team you know um just okay no I know what that's not done that bit okay that's not updated that never mind sorry I'd written some other bits in there and um, so have a plan and a team so um you know share ideas share with your church what's going to happen get ideas from them and um, you know if you've got people that can share resources and share the responsibility so it's not all falling on one person and sort of to jump ahead so schedule stuff that's great but also engage with people have one person on your team who does the scheduling and they literally spend one morning every week just scheduling everything up um and then on uh, someone else on you know throughout the week goes in for a couple minutes a day and just um you know responds to any requests that are on there comments with other people could you split it out onto people who would prefer to be on different platforms it doesn't all have to be one person um be prepared for things so this was a had them on my notes um so do an audit like beforehand look at where you are um what could you do um where are you lacking was the potential what you know look from the outside in um do think about crisis management and processes and that's not necessarily to say a crisis within your church but i suppose again a crisis such as this last week of actually have you got certain things in place so that you're not scrambling around trying to come up with um posts not it sounds really sad to say like anticipating the, the queen's death but sort of you know actually let's think more positively the coronation so actually could you start scheduling a few things now um, and go right okay we don't know the exact date but we know it's going to be cor have his coronation soon can we start sort of thinking about the types of posts we want to be putting up um uh you know things like praying for new prime ministers or, or national leaders actually could you again have the kind of text written you just need to input the, the date and the person or something but you know you've got those things in place and then from a slightly um less happy viewpoint situations such as <sighs> Um, where the national, regional, local incidences, are there things that you kind of um, perhaps need to be prepared for that whether or not you hope to never have to use them, that there are things in place if you know how to, what is appropriate messaging to respond to. Um, if something happens, thinking slightly from a safeguarding point, that if something would happen within your church, or, or again, locally, how actually is the church going to respond to that um, publicly? Mm, it's not always appropriate not to say anything. Is it how as a team, as a church, do you need to re be responding to something? Um, and you have that written out so that, again, if something should happen, it's not one person scrambling going, I'm not actually quite sure how to respond to this issue. Um, and you don't want other people the local press to be commenting on the church's lack of response or an inappropriate response or something and it sounds really like upsetting to have to think about things that might happen but it is better to have them in a folder somewhere you know in a file on your computer so that in the worst case scenario that you need to respond to something that you have that um 
and slightly also from a safeguarding perspective, less in crisis management and response of actually those who are managing your Facebook uh, social media platforms, are they, are they safeguard trained? Do they know how to respond to things? Because actually, if they are managing the church's presence, if they are having people question, uh, not question them, get in touch with them, not just from a child safeguarding, but actually vulnerable adults or um pastorally safeguarding people who are maybe messaging with problems of their own or in a um being um I think you said earlier like Chris about like uh trolling or something like that of you know actually are they trained in how to deal with that and it's not that it needs to be like <laughs> days and days of training but actually are they aware of like how to respond if someone says something hurtful online about the church and our beliefs do they know what the process is you know do you delete it do you just hide it do you respond and say I'm really sorry you feel that way oh we'll pray for you um so yeah it's like the the safeguarding online is actually very complicated not just from a are we do we know how kids are using it but actually do we know how we are interacting as an organizational account to those who might interact with us um, and then kind of unrelated from the comms point, but from a digital point, actually, are we teaching our church how to engage most safe, most safely in a safe manner online? You know, are they aware of not clicking any link? Are they aware of fake accounts and phishing and, um, you know, fake news and things like that? Like, actually, are we equipping our church as individuals with how best to engage um, online? Um, don't just sell a Sunday, a said you schedule, but engage with your community, respond to things that are being said or happening. Show the real people. Don't just try and think that we are this or portray that we are this perfect group of people who have these perfect lives and stuff. If we're struggling in life, you know, just because um, we have big buildings, a lot of churches are big, that doesn't mean that we're not going to be impacted by the um, cost of living. Actually address the reality that, that we will all face it and churches will face it too. Um, better to show little and often. So do a, you know, frequently post. Um, even It doesn't have to be something big or hugely theological and spiritual. Sometimes it's those sort of fun posts that just help to sort of um, add something to the mix. Better to just be a kind of frequent presence on people's feeds rather than one post every month and that'd be it. Um, further resources. <laughs> I'm near the end. Um, further resources. Um, so I've done a number of webinars with SWBA, um, so Southwest Baptist Association, um, I said I was going to put loads more photos in and then I didn't actually. This is like the one photo I've really included. I've got some lovely colourful slides um, uh, videos um, uh, on various different kind of digital aspects. So I've got um, communi communicating through social media this Christmas. That was last year. But I think there's still a lot that can be relevant. Hybrid church. So how do we um, think about kind of um, hybrid church in the future? Um, creating videos. Um, and digital resources that would actually I'd really recommend going and watching that one as well because in that one I go through a lot of the different types of um, resources that assist in uh, content creation on them there's the videos and then there's the handouts um, and the slides um, and then I will share them in the well now if I can find my notes I have got um, so I'm going to put in the chat so that is the um, uh, page with the links to all of the videos in. I've then got um, content ideas template and I've literally have done like 50 content ideas that your church can do. So I have a list of them and then here is the temp content planner um, on there. So that's in, if you need to go back to them. Yeah, no, that should, that should come up. That should work for everyone, hopefully. Um, if not, I will, I will send you the um, links anyway, Chris and Glenn. So if you do need them and anyone that's watching, they will be in the notes as well. 
oh my goodness thank you for listening any questions sorry that ran over far longer than i thought that would thank you ever so much um if you've been watching um do get in touch i will put all our details below my details below if you want to get in touch and find out anything else um but thank you so much for watching this video hope it has been of help thank you.